So at Forth Valley College we do a range of um, things for the student community. So one of the things that we do is provide free healthy breakfast and a free healthy lunch. And this ensures that students are ready to learn. Um, they know that if they come into college they're going to get a, a, a good healthy breakfast and a lunch, no questions asked. Um, so it removes the stigma from having to provide uh, free food as well. Um, and this also helps them get ready for learning, um, encourages more positive attendance um, and it really helps make those decisions for the student, financial decisions, a lot easier. So, you know, heating or eating or travel or eating, it makes them a lot easier because they know they're going to get fed within um, college. And that's every day, you know, including school holidays as well. Um, we also now do the food to go, which is um, the, at the end of the day, all our hot and cold food that would have otherwise been thrown away is now packaged up and we provide allergen information and everything they need to know and it's all put into bags so the students can help themselves to that at the end of the day as well, no questions asked and that's also been really popular and we do that across all three campuses. seasonal projects, um, we do um, a Taste Our Best uh, award which means that within our training restaurant we try and get as much food from our local provenance as possible and that means that we have to keep it very seasonal. Um, so we have been awarded that I think four years in a row now um, and so it's something that we're really proud of. The students have to demonstrate local knowledge about the produce and we have to have a certain percentage on the menu that's, that's, that's been of a local provenance. So that's something that we're very proud of and shows our commitment to using local and seasonal um, produce. We also do a four weekly menu cycle um, within the refectory canteen areas and in the training restaurant and this means that Again, we are changing the menus to reflect what is in season, to try and reduce food waste, to try and reduce carbon footprint, um, and also to give uh, enough variety that the students can also do all their learning as well. So um, we've been working really closely with Startup Sterling for a few years now, um, and that was really the start of us uh, doing Christmas meals for the community. Um, and it's just kind of grown from there. Um, we started off doing sort of I think three, four hundred meals for them one year, and then it's just kind of expanded. It's not just Christmas meals now we do. We also do holiday meals as well for various projects within the Stirling area, and um, we also work with some other partners um, in the Fourth Valley region to do a similar service as well. Um, it's been a, an amazing project, not just for the community, who obviously helps. I mean, I think we served over 1,200 Christmas meals last year, um, or produced 1,200 Christmas meals last year. But also from the prospect, uh, you know, the perspective of the student, they are getting involved in that. They can see what mass production looks like. They also know that they are giving back something to the community as well. Um, so I think that's been a really valuable uh, project that we've done with uh, Startup Sterling, and we hope to continue that um, with them and hopefully grow it as well. Um, even further, you know, with other partners in the area. So for sustainability, um, we have many goals within the college, but it's particularly within hospitality, what we've found is there's lots of small wins that we've been able to achieve over the last few years. Um, so one of the main things that we did was surrounding packaging. So um, looking to use packaging that isn't plastic, um, and change that for things that are cardboard or um, more easily recyclable has been a big thing and also just reducing the amount of packaging that we're using and um, post covid we used a lot more packaging because people wanted single serve um, and they didn't want to you know use plates and things like that um, but now uh, we're definitely moving away to reducing the amount of plastic packaging we're using and the range that we have as well um, so that's not only saving us money, but it's also been really good for sustainability. 
Um, another small win that we had was removing plastic sauce sachets from the refectories and that something like 92,000 sauce sachets have been removed from circulation per year now, which is great and replaced with the big bottles instead. Um, so again, that's um, been really good for the sustainability and reducing plastics. Um, and we've got I've talked about the food waste already, but addressing that through giving all our leftover food to students um, who are in need at the end of the day. Um, and also create, we use a Friday to create a menu, so any leftovers or anything that needs used up that week, then we'll try and create a menu around that on a Friday to address um, any leftovers and, and reduce food waste that way. Um, we also use a really excellent EPOS system, so it's a stock system and that helps us really reduce um, food waste as well. Um, so we use that quite um, regularly within uh, both the teaching and learning and within the commercial areas. Um, and we've also introduced a sustainability unit as well into our learning and teaching. So we um, teach our students, particularly the chef students, um, do this unit and uh, the bakers and the, the professional cooks um, just to really see how they can make a difference in the things that they are doing um, and learn about that because it's going to be a big part of what they do in the future. So since doing the social audit, um, I think it's given us a chance to really reflect on actually what we do do in the community and in the college. Um, there is a huge amount that you know you just take for granted and you think that we're just doing that day in, day out. Um, so it has really given us a good opportunity to reflect on that and I guess record some of what we're doing and then also use that as a platform to maybe you know look at other things that we could do and how we can expand that. And I think for the future it will be really good um, to be able to grow in some of the things that we've already done. Um, so in terms of for example, the free cooking classes, um, which were really super popular. It would be really great to take that to the next level if we can and, and offer that out to more people within the community and um, because we see the impact that that has made, not just on people's health and well-being, but also on giving them basic skills and maybe just um, encouraging them, you know, that they could be in employment or, you know, get a job in a cafe or, you know, something like that. So I think that it's been a really important piece of work, particularly, and one that we'd like to grow on. One of the best pieces of advice I was given, uh, and I think that is really useful, is that you should start small. So lots of little things can have just as much impact as one big thing and can often be a lot more achievable. And I think that goes particularly for sustainability, but also for food insecurity as well. Um, little small projects can often have lots of little wins that then will you know, impact positively on the local community.